the reply I got, both from Lee Song the distributors in North America and Lee Song China, floored me. I was expecting them to get very defensive, like most manufacturers would if you're telling them there's an issue with their speakers. They were not. What a gorgeous finish. So this, this video is gonna be a little bit uh, different, a little bit simpler than uh, the last few that I have been making. I'm gonna keep the fancy editing down to a minimum just because uh, my backlog right now of things to do in terms of the Hi-Fi Cave is uh, ramping up a little too much. Um, there are still a few amplifiers that I need to finish playing with. I am uh, also now uh, going to be tackling the new Mako speaker, Mako Open Baffle speakers. I have two different versions of them. I'm still working on my own DIY uh, Open Baffle concepts. And this is going to serve as probably the worst intro and worst hook of all time. Most of you have probably already left. So let's get to the point. We have Lee Song AL4 bookshelf slash desktop speakers. Um, they are absolutely beautiful. The finish, the piano finish on them, the lacquer is gorgeous. For 400 US dollars a pair, this is very, very impressive finish. Very nice. There's even like a nice little aluminum, copper aluminum ring on the outside of the driver, giving it a nice finish. The Lee Song logo is beautiful. Very, very, very um, reflective, matte, like it goes really well with the with the um, piano lacquer that's on there. Yeah, overall for the price, spectacular. Now, let's get to how it sounds really quick. They're extremely surprising in terms of bass. This little four inch or sub under four inch even. It's called an AL4 driver, but it, four may be meaning standing for four, a four inch uh, driver. It looks smaller than a four inch driver, but sure, it's four inch. The amount of bass that they make in a room is very impressive. The accuracy of the imaging for a full range driver is very good. Actually, the imaging is a little bit better than other Lee Song drivers that I currently have. Not better than the Silver 10, not better than the Platinum 10, but the imaging might be better even than the Fast 8, the F15, the F18, the Fast 15, maybe. It might be better, the imaging. Like the resolution is very good. And it's very, the, the, um, the elements in the sound stage are, are nicely defined for a full range driver. It's not, it's not pinpoint accurate, like a three-way speaker using say uh, an AMT tweeter or beryllium tweeter or, um, or magna pans even. Uh, but for a full range, it's, uh, it, the imaging is very, very good. Um, beautiful tone, the tone is wonderful. The instruments sound nicely fleshed out. Overall, if this is where the story ends, these I'd be jumping up and down. I'd be ecstatic. I'd be recommending them to everyone I know, both for near field, um, casual listening in your living room, dedicated listening in a nice little audio room, uh, for your desktop even, although they're kind of big for your desktop. Like for my desktop, it wouldn't work. My desktop's not, like my desk is not big enough. I would have to get really creative in terms of stands because um, I have a very large monitor, like I use a, a, I use a 42 inch monitor for my, my workstation and it doesn't leave much space for bookshelves of this size. It's not that it's impossible, but I have to find some kind of like speaker arm or speaker brackets to, to mount them on the side of the, the screen. Anyway, uh, yeah, they sound great. They're, they're terrific, surprising even. Like what, 400? So what's the problem? So the issue I'm having is that when I crank these over 82 or 83 decibels, th there's so much cabinet vibrations that start happening that the driver itself, itself starts to vibrate. I mean, to give you an idea, if I play something that is over 85 decibels that has a good amount of bass in it, 
the cabinet resonates so much that if one of the speaker binding posts is not fully tightened, it rattles like crazy. Hmm. So that's why I'm facing such a dilemma. Because this is Lee Song. It's a company that I love and I use for so many of my experiments and my speakers. It's like I have the Fast 8, I've had the Silver 10, the F15, the Fast 15, the F18, use the Platinum 10. They are all spectacular drivers. They all have a flavor, a character, each of them. But the quality that is brought out in the sound with all of the drivers I just mentioned is stunning at low volume and high volume. Heck, my current baffles that I have with the F15s and even these concept baffles that I was inspired to make by Steve at Deckware, look at this. Okay? And these are meant to sit like at roughly at this ang angle on the ground using the, 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 F, the Fast 8. Even those are stunning and some of the best sonic characteristics to my taste that I've heard. Now, why are these not on the same playing field? But I guess it's all about how I, how I think of these, because naturally we all buy speakers and we all want our speakers and any of our gear to perform sonically and, re and, and, and reproduce music that we love at any volume. But it's not the case here. If you are using these, listening at low volume up to 80 dB, okay, 80 decibels in room loudness, they're spectacular, spectacular. And I would be recommending these like with a five star, a speaker of the year award, blah, 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 whatever all these other YouTubers are doing. I would, but I can't. Because if you go over 82, 83 dB and there's bass, they fall off a cliff. It's unfortunate. It is and it isn't. So now you know, those are the parameters. Low volume, well low volume. Keep it under 80 to be safe. If you go over 80, it depends on the track. Some tracks have a lot of bass, cabinet will start to resonate and it'll affect the driver. The driver frame is also mounted on plastic. You don't talk about that. Hold on, so before, yeah, set of parameters. The fact that it's mounted on plastic, so the, the, the magnet and the voice coil are together on a plastic frame. And it's a little like a clear plastic frame. I have never seen a speaker driver on a plastic frame before. Maybe some of you have, have you? I haven't. Um, but a lot of the vibration I'm hearing sounds like vibrating plastic. It is coming from the driver. So the cab, it's like, it's like there's almost so much sound pressure in the cabinet that can only escape through the front porthole is generating such a low frequency inside the cabinet that is also making the driver vibrate. That's what I think. But that being said, near field or not, they sound great if you stay under 82, 83 decibels. Not just great, sound staging, imaging, bass, mid-range, tonality of instruments. They sound good with a $50 SMSL class D amp, and they sound good too with a $5,000 Deckware 300B single-ended class A amplifier. They sound good. They sound good with my Melody 211 amp. They sound good with the first watt F7. They do. Not over 83 dB. And it's not a, a question of taste here over 83 dBs. It's the question of noisiness. They start vibrating. Everything collapses. Soundstage is gone, everything. Over 83, 84 dB, everything collapses. And it's like just noise coming out of the speakers. And I thought that they were defective at first. But no, I got two pairs. So of course I reached out to Lee Song, um, and not just Lee Song, the distributors, but also at least like, I got a re response actually from Lee Song in China, the people who design and build these. I love their speakers. It's not, a, it's not a mystery. Look, look, look in the back. It's like Lee Song City back there. Love them. And I let them know. I said, look, I said, this is what I'm experiencing. Um, as they broke in, it got a little bit better. I was able to actually 
push them to 82, 83 on more tracks comfortably. The vibration reduced a lot. But if you go 85 plus, forget it. They still collapse. Um, so I gave them the opportunity. I said, I'm, I'm curious. Like, do you, do, do you all think that I somehow have more than like both, both pairs are defective? Or is this intended? Is, it, is this uh, the nature of this tiny, tiny little full range driver? Is this normal? Or is this like, is this a, re it's a natural relationship between how this driver performs and the type and size of the cabinet? Because you're intending this as a desktop solution maybe and people listening at 90 decibels on their desktop are very few and far between slash insane. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. So I asked them, I said, look, I said, what would you guys like? Would you guys want me to send these back? Do you want to send me a third pair? Um, what, what's your stance on this? The reply I got, both from Lee Song, the distributors in North America, and Lee Song, China, floored me. I was expecting them to get very defensive, like most manufacturers would if you're telling them there's an issue with their speakers. They were not. They said, Loic, we trust you implicitly. Your opinion matters greatly to us, and I think the world needs to hear your opinion on our products, whatever that may be. Do your video, and this will help us grow and make a better product. That made me smile. That's the kind of attitude and character that I appreciate in today's world. Honesty, quality driven. So, this is a simple video. It's not long, not too much fancy, no fancy editing on this one because my backlog is just getting out of control. So there you have it, the AL4s, use them at low to, me low to medium volume, near field or regular field in small, medium sized rooms. Great tone, great imaging, great sound staging. Just don't listen to them loud. Or wait. Don't get these yet. Wait for Lee Song to make them better, which I know they will, and they can. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. That was simple. That was easy. No. Yeah, God, I wish these would play over, over 85 dB. God, they sound good. But it is what it is.